users, Alex here, Vray Guide, and I do hope you enjoyed those video tutorials because today Vray 6 was officially released. And it's time for us to do Vray 6 Guide video training where you can learn the entire Vray from A to Z, all the functions and features. And of course, ask me questions and I'll be doing those cool new feature demonstrations like this one today, which is NMesh. This NMesh modifier plugin will allow you to add cool patterns to your cloth, uh, any objects, anything that you want to have nice cool displacement um, mesh with patterns, this will do the job. Okay, so first I want to bring in my, it's called loop3, I found this pattern on the internet. Let's zoom in and see what we've got. You can see this cool uh, little loop. I'm going to first uh, ungroup it because we need to convert it into mesh. And I'm actually going to select everything, click Alt Q, go to isolation mode. Now we can click attach list and select just the list of those. Oops. Apparently everything is instanced, so make sure to convert it into mesh first and then attach the bodies. All right. Now, once we have our pattern as a mesh, as a whole mesh, we're going to add it to our sofa here, to our cloth. So let's select our sofa, click on V-Ray and Mesh, and here that's the modifier. Um, we can actually click Add and add this pattern to the objects. Okay, so in order to see, we need to start the render or IPR. I'm actually going to configure my screen into two screens like that, so it will be much easier to follow. So one is my couch. If I click Render. You'll be able to see how this whole thing is looking here with our modifier. Again, if I, uh, if I stop and I close the modifier, that's how it looks without. And with, this is how it's looking, okay? So I'm not gonna use V-Ray frame buffer. I'm actually going to start my IPR. And uh, let's see. How we can modify it so it looks first from first look it looks a little bit flat right so what i found is if we play around with the height and we go like into minus uh, i don't know thousand couple of thousands we'll be able to see some uh volume coming out of this okay so if you want to have nice round shapes as you can see here uh this is uh this is the way to go here okay now, we also have something that's called crop size uh, for the X and Y and Z. This is the size of the box. So um, let's select our pattern. So this is our pattern. You can see it's not really um, following here and not really attached. It's kind of detached here. We're going to fix that in a second, but first, uh, let's do a little bit tiling. It looks a little big. So let me do 20, 22 and 22, a little bit bigger. And now let's zoom in a little here. Oops. Okay. So obviously the height is a little bit too much. So let's reduce that to get nice and round. Uh, pattern here but again you can see it's not really um, connecting right on those we can see those um, gaps in between so the best is to start working with crop and looking you really need to find that uh, pattern inside so you can see I kind of cropped it here it's not uh, really continuing so I have to find that pattern here almost okay so going the right direction okay almost there so let's do 0.5 and 0.5 it's got to be square all right yeah 
Look at that. So it looks, looks a little bit too big, but now they have the connection. Okay, so we found the loop. When you get that pattern, your task is actually to find that nice uh, folding loop here. Okay. So let's get that volume back a little bit. Okay, so that's looking nice. Um, again, if this uh, height is set to zero, your thing going to be completely flat. Okay, and now this is here like 11,000. You can see it's get nice round. So again, it all depends on how big is your pattern, how big is your um, is your object, is your mesh. Okay, but you can fix and tweak here everything. Let's do two, 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 and see how this works. Okay, obviously that's a little too much. I'm gonna put like 2,500. Let's see how this works. All right, yeah. Look at that nice pattern. Perfect. Okay. So we have uh, other parameters here. Height offset. I can actually offset that from the object if I want to kind of shift it out in and out. Um, obviously, this thing works uh, by the UVW mesh uh, mapping coordinates. So you can use mapping from the object, but uh, again, this object already was mapped, so it doesn't really matter. It's following uh, mesh IDs, rotation, so we can rotate it. So the rotation is in the of those uh, of those patterns here. Let's see if we get it rotated like that. Oh, very cool. But again, when we rotate that, we kind of destroying our our perfect pattern here. Okay. We can do offsets, uh, random offsets. Just play around with those. But it's just you know offsetting the whole thing. Okay. So again, the main trick was to find your square where it will be repeating and not uh, breaking and having any gaps. Okay. So this is looking pretty cool. Um, let's see some nice texture on it. We have a new library here, but I'm gonna use something from old. Let's get this. This texture, see how it looks, because the gray is kinda, kinda mellow but this nice metal anodized aluminum looks like this armor you know whatever they have in uh, lord of the rings the one that frodo had this one is gold though yeah looking pretty cool so uh you guys are more than welcome to go to go and just you know experiment with with a bunch of different you know textures and materials see how the stuff work how the patterns working with this and in the upcoming days we also going to release our update for very six guide so make sure to follow because more cool information is coming your way go ahead check this and mesh out and thanks a lot for watching this is alex your very guide talk soon ciao